morning, and welcome to First United. Our pastor and his family are on vacation, a well-deserved vacation. Carol Ann and I will be bringing the service to you. We want to extend our thanks to Diana for singing, to Maxine for playing, to the greeters who brought you into the service and welcomed you in, from the service in the fellowship room after church, and Amanda and Ayla for handling the electronics and the Zoom during the service. We'll start with announcements. Are there any announcements? Just a reminder that the church office will be closed tomorrow. And have a good weekend. Anything else? Any other announcements? Okay. Then we'll go to the moment of reflection with Maxine Plain. Would you please all rise for the call to worship and the prayer of invocation? <clears throat> like clay, we arrive at this time of worship. Shapeless and full of potential, we arrive. Like clay, we prepare for this time of worship. Stretched and twisted into formation, we prepare. Like clay, we enter this time of worship. Formed and ready for warmth, we enter. Let's all join for the prayer of invocation. Let us pray. Loving creator, maker of everything good, we are in your hands. Be with us now as we gather ourselves to seek your wisdom and strive to become the people you would have us be. And let's all join to sing in the church's one foundation in the United Methodist Hymnal 545. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, our Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he 
Now we'll have the prayer of confession. All of us are going to start it. Unlike clay, we actively resist the diverse ways you shape us into what the world needs. We frequently struggle to trust in your vision for who we could become. We anxiously avoid facing the heat that protects and sustains us. We humbly confess to these and all our shortcomings. In the words of assurance, God graciously chooses us despite our self-destructive ways. God repeatedly mends our broken places and unceasingly delivers us from harm toward wholeness. All thanks be to God. And we'll have the sharing of God's peace. And uh, we share God's peace by honoring each person's willingness to share their personal level of confident comfort on approach, if someone extends their hands and you feel comfortable shaking hands, please do so.
If you'll be seated, we'll have the scripture reading. Edith is going to bring us our scripture this morning. Our first reading this morning is from Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 11, at the potter's house. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands, so the potter formed it into another pot shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. At any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed. And if that nation is, I warned, repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built and planted, and it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now therefore say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. Look, I am preparing disaster for you, and devising a plan against you. So turn your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. And the second verse is Psalms 119. You search me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Being a word, before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. And it's the readings. Thank you, Edith. And now we will join in singing Here I Am, Lord, United Methodist Hymnal 593.
The children of all ages, it's welcome to come up front. Do you remember what the Bible verse was about? About a potter? And what was the potter worked with? What does a potter, what does a potter work with? A clay. No, he works with clay. And God molded all of us. But I'm going to read you a story about a potter. Dave the Potter. Now, Dave was an artist, a poet, and a slave. You can open that up right now. And you can work it like, you're going to work that like Dave worked his clay. To us, it is just dirt, the ground we walk on. Scoop up a handful, the gritty grains slip between your fingers. I'm going to hold the book up so people can see the picture. Okay. I don't have enough hands. On wet days, heavy with rainwater, it is cool and squishy, mud pie heaven. But today, it was clay the plain and basic stuff, upon which he learned to form a life as a slave nearly 200 years ago. To us, it is a pot, round and tall, good for keeping marbles or fresh cut water, flowers. But to, it's to play with. But today, it is a pot large enough to store a season's grain harvest to put it up salted meat to hold memories. What you do with it, just keep squeezing it in your hand until it's soft. Each one began out of clouds of dust, clotted clumps of cave, ground in the pug mill and carried wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow to Dave's spinning potter's wheel. We've taken the wheelbarrow full of stuff. The short? Okay. Good job. Okay, now turn the page for me again.
with a fat, flat wooden paddle large enough to roll across the Atlantic. Dave mixed clay with water drawn from Big Horse Creek until wet and stiff and heavy. Okay, show the picture. That's clay, but it's not as dirty and gritty as Dave worked with. Dave kicked his potter wheel until it spun as fast as a carnival's wheel of fortune. like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Dave's hands buried in the mounded mud pulled out the shapes of a jar. Can you imagine that? No, I, I have watched a potter. Um, I don't think I could get the jar out of the clay like she did. you know my main problem would have been my hands would be dirty <laughs> he chap chip chap his chap thumbs pinched into the center squeezed the inside against the finger outside As, as the wheel spun around and round, the jars of clay rose up like a robin's puffed breast, but only so far before its immense weight threatened to collapse. The jar grew so large, Dave could no longer wrap his strong hands around it. If he climbed into the jar and curled it into a ball, he could, would have been embraced. Can you imagine that? Uh, that would be, well, spread your arms out. Spread your arms out like this. That's how big his jar was. Dave mounted the coils of clay one by one on the half-finished jar. He ran his fingers along the sides to smooth it all together, kicking the wheel with the heel of his foot. The shoulder rim shrugged upward as the jar took the shape. They knew was there even before he worked the raw mound on his wheel. While the clay dried, Dave pounded wood ash and sand to mix a glass-like brown glaze to withstand time. But before the jar completely hardened, Dave picked up a stake and wrote to let us know that he was here. I wonder where in all my creation, friendship to all and 
every nation. Dave lived in the 1850s, and that was when he was making his um, pottery. Now, do you think God took and formed each one of us like Dave formed his pole? Okay, thank you for coming up, Zach. I'll be reading the scripture, and I'm going to be reading it from the, the gospel, I mean, and I'll be reading it from the, Luke, the Living Bible. It's Luke 14, 25 through 33. Great crowds were following him. He turned around and addressed them as follows. Anyone who wants to be my follower must love me far more than he does his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers or sisters, yes, more than his own life. Otherwise, he cannot be my disciple. And no one can be my disciple who does not carry his cross and follow me. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first getting estimates and then checking to see if he has enough money to pay the bills? Otherwise, he might complete only the foundation before running out of funds. And then how everyone would laugh. See that fellow there? They would mock. He started that building and ran out of money before he was finished. Or what king would ever dream of going to war without first sitting down with his counselors and discussing whether his army of 10,000 is strong enough to defeat the 20,000 who are marching against him? If this decision is negative, then while the enemy trips, troops are still far away, he will send a truce team to discuss terms of peace. So no one can become my disciple unless he first sits down and counts his blessings and then announces them all for me. It's a reading of the gospel. And now we'll go into the sermon. Sermon is going to be based on Jeremiah today and Luke, and the title is Like Clay. So it's throwing a pot from a lump of clay is very much akin to learning how to drive a stick shift. It's a process that is fraught with failure when first attempted. The potter's wheel cannot be static or unchanging for it to produce a quality product. In our lives, this obstacle also applies as we navigate life. It's virtually impossible to make an exact duplicate. As in life, there are conditions of the wheel and the clay itself to create an exact duplicate. One last element is needed to complete the process of creating a ve vessel, and that is heat. Heat from a kiln solidifies the clay and maintains its form. It's this very history that forms the clay's more permanent, more, more permanent state. Likewise, our history informs, but do not defy who we are to become. The Lord warned Jeremiah that all must be willing to be reformed into more than we could imagine for ourselves. The Lord then issued a caution that he may declare a nation or kingdom for destruction. The Lord declared that if a nation turns from evil, I will not destroy it. Then God instructs Jeremiah to go, to go and warn Judah and Jerusalem of his plans, unless they turn from evil and do what is right. In Psalms 139, verse 18, God gives us a look at his promise of constant thoughts of us. How wonderful to realize that we are in his care. 
and as the people of Judah and Jerusalem are expected to do the right thing. Now, can we pray? Lord, we realize from your teachings that we have been made in your image, but with God's gift of free will, making us subject to human weaknesses. Grant us the strength to resist. Guide us to the joy, faith, and service in your name provides. In your name, amen. Next is prayers of the community. Are there any prayers of the community? Anybody got any prayers? Kathy. Lord, we ask for healing, comfort, and guidance for each of these requests from your people. We pray for Kathy's sister, Jeannie, after soldier, shoulder surgery, that she has quick healing and recovery. And we also pray for Karina, Carol Ann's niece, and my niece, Jen, who is having some health difficulties. Lord, we ask for your healing, comfort, and guidance for each of these requests for your people. In, in turmoil in the world, almost beyond our comprehension, in your name we pray, amen. Next is a silent prayer. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our sin as we forget, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our sins. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now we'll do the holy offering. Is it time for us to commit our gifts to the church to support God's ministry in this community and beyond? The collection plates have been placed along all sides of the sanctuary. Let's all rise and join in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here Chris. 
sisters parables praise the spirit holy spirit Join in the prayer of dedication that's printed on the screen. <clears throat> Holy giver of all gifts, we thank you for this opportunity to share our gifts and participate in the various ministries you've placed before this faith community. Bless these monies in each of us as we go back out to continue your work in the world. Amen. Our next hymn, our last hymn is On Eagle's Wing, and we're going to sing it through twice. And God will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine. God will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of God's hand. Like God, like clay, may God continue to reform and reshape us into our truest self, now and every day thereafter. Amen. 